In this video series, I'm going to show you chameleon care through the most delicate life stage. Today, we're going to go over the schedule that I set up for a typical day in the life of a baby chameleon. We won't go into detail about the equipment, that's for a different day. We're going to go into the environmental schedule. This video is based on the Chameleon Academy Daily Rhythm Model, as presented in the new book, Tiny Dragons, The Art of Hatchling Chameleon Care. We will go over this environmental schedule and show how it nurtures the chameleon. We will follow a group of baby panther chameleons as they're raised in their individual enclosures and go about their day. Let's take a look at the model first. We have three entries for the separate light functions of white light to see, UVB light to create vitamin D3, and heat lamp to help them warm up. There are slots for both a mister and a fogger. Altogether, this daily rhythm shows what can create an ideal day in the life of a chameleon. Let's start at 7 a.m. when the lights come on, welcoming them to a new day. The baby chameleon will slowly open its eyes and take stock of what the new day looks like. Eventually, it will make its way to where it can warm up under the lights. Although the lights can all come on at the same time, I do like to stagger them to replicate more light as the sun rises. The chameleon will bask under the heat lamp and under the UVB. Unlike us, they can see UVB and have been observed basking under UVB separately from heat. Your chameleon will take its time under the lights, but will eventually move away when warmed up enough after the cool night. If you notice they only spend 30 minutes or an hour under the heat lamp, then you can consider turning off the heat lamp after that time as it will only heat the cage after that point. In a screen cage, this is optional, but in a hybrid cage, which retains heat, I have to be careful not to let the cage overheat. So I turn off the heat lamp as soon as it's no longer providing use for the chameleon. And now it's time to hunt for food and watch the world go by. They can go to the fruit fly cup that is always stocked with flies, or else they can go to the cricket feeder run cup for crickets. On a regular basis, I give an afternoon snack of bean beetles delivered directly to the leaves by them. Chameleons are attracted to food that moves and quick action will definitely catch their eye. Here, a batch of bean beetles is introduced. The crawling and dispersing catches the chameleon's eye and it enthusiastically feeds. A baby's job is to grow, and growth is fueled by food, water, light, and heat. And it's our job to make sure they have enough, but not too much. As far as food is concerned, babies are different than adults. With adults, you want to be careful how much food they get. With babies, you want to have food available every day and at all times. I like to have a banana mash cup that's constantly maintained with banana mash and fruit flies. There's a feeder run cup which is stocked daily with appropriately sized crickets, and bean beetles are added on a regular basis. I'm looking for variety and quantity. I don't want food crawling all over the place, but I do want it available. As they get bigger, I introduce new foods to them. Though they can get intimidated by new food, like this silkworm, until they figure out it is made of good stuff to eat. At this stage in life, chameleons can be nervous and unsure. They can spend much of the day hiding, and this is understandable. They are small enough to be eaten by anything, even large insects, so wariness is warranted. This is programmed into their DNA. But as they spend days and weeks in a safe environment, they will start to settle in. When setting up a cage for hatchlings, actually any age chameleon, hiding spaces are necessary, even if they don't use it. Just having it there and knowing it's there will give them confidence to perch in the open. Baby chameleons tend to be active and may search around their enclosure. In a properly well-planted enclosure, it may not be easy to find them at all times, but they do have their favorite places to perch, sleep, and yes, poop. Through the rest of the day, the baby will thermoregulate to make sure it has enough heat to process its food and grow. But the baby is small, and there is a danger of overheating, so it's important that the baby has a way to escape the heat source. Chameleons have a curious characteristic that they do not seem to have a good sense of when our heat bulbs are too hot. And they, even as adults, will burn themselves. As adults, the burning will produce unsightly scars. As babies, this could desiccate them and lead to death. So we need to be careful how we apply heat. Low wattage bulbs raised above the surface of the cage top 
can be effective and safe, though in some cases, just the heat from the white light bulbs can be enough. When the end of the day comes, the chameleon will retreat back to a perching area that is safe. A chameleon is very good at recognizing patterns, and if your lights are on a schedule, they will go to their sleeping spot and go to sleep before lights go out. New technology is allowing our lights to gradually dim instead of suddenly turning off, and this allows a more natural photo cycle. Once the lights go out at around 7 p.m. on the rhythm model, the enclosure starts to cool and we start our hydration schedule. To start, the misters go on for 30 seconds to wet the area, and then the fogger starts. The overnight fog replicates the moving in of a fog bank, which envelops the chameleon and allows them a slow hydration as they breathe in the fog. It is a slow hydration and takes time, but by the time they wake up the next morning, they wake up hydrated. Right before the lights come on, the misters go off for 30 seconds to coat the area in dew. The chameleon then wakes up with the lights turning on and it can top off its hydration if any more is needed. Our baby is ready to start another day. Now we have a curious thing here on the Chameleon Academy rhythm model, which is an optional afternoon rainstorm. This is a built-in plan for if you need more hydration than a fog-filled night can provide. We don't like to blindly put a hydration plan in place and trust it will work. We want to check it on a regular basis. We do this by making sure the poop, when it's freshly deposited, is moist. And when we provide water during the day, we want them to not feel like drinking because they are already hydrated. If their poop is dry or they gulp water, we know that we need to supplement our hydration. To do that, we can provide an afternoon rain shower. For this, I like to turn off any heat or UVB bulbs that may be still on and start the fogger before the misters come on. This gives the chameleon a visual warning and the cage an opportunity to cool off before the mister starts. Nobody likes to be sunning and then be suddenly sprayed by water. Even when you are thirsty, this is uncomfortable. Providing environmental warnings allows the chameleon to prepare for the upcoming rain shower. Whether you have a rain shower as a regular part of the day or not is up to you. If your chameleon is already hydrated, then an afternoon rain shower is just providing water flowing through the cage that your chameleon will hide from. If you have trouble with low humidity days, then a rain shower is a good solution. But if the overnight fogging is doing its job, then you are just soaking your cage for no benefit. This will have to be a judgment call by you made with respect to your particular conditions. What is important is that you are measuring hydration and have tools to increase or back down the hydration opportunities provided. Now, each one of these aspects we touched on requires the proper setup and has its own section of the book. Proper cage selection, cage setup, lighting, heating, hydration, feeding, all of these are studies in themselves. Today, we went over the high level progression of a day in the life of a baby chameleon. In future videos, I will be setting up indoor and outdoor cages, setting up the lighting and a hydration. You'll even join me for preparing insect food. Of course, if you want to read ahead or have it all in your hand, a link to our textbook, Tiny Dragons, is in the description. This video is meant for educational purposes. Baby chameleons are incredibly cute, but they are also delicate, and it takes special skill to raise them. If you are deciding to get your first chameleon, look into a well-started juvenile from a reputable breeder. That said, the Chameleon Academy is here to educate on all life stages of this wonderful creature. Check the links in the description if you would like to get involved in other chameleon educational opportunities throughout the week. This is Bill Strand signing off. Take care of each other, and I'll see you next time.